the top worst things to do in a lucid dream. This is different to my other videos in the sense that I'm telling you what not to do as opposed to what to do. Now these things that I would recommend never to do in a lucid dream, they're not really things that you can never do in the sense that, you know, they're going to be bad for you. These are just things that I wouldn't recommend doing because they're taking away that time that you could be spending doing something else more productive in a lucid dream. They're taking away from better experiences and providing you with just sort of average, mediocre ones. Number one, don't just walk around aimlessly. If you're lucid and you've become lucid, that's usually taken a lot of hard work. That's taken you doing your reality checks, you know, putting in the work and practice. So if you're just going to walk around in the dream and sort of do nothing, you might as well just be awake or just asleep you're not really using that special conscious state of lucid dreaming to do anything profound or, you know, important. And obviously, you know, some guys will argue that, well, I just wanted to walk around, I wanted to explore the dream. That's fine. You can explore the dream, but you don't have to just walk around aimlessly as if, you know, you're walking around a small box. There are many more things you could do. Number two, don't just suddenly start having sex with everyone in the dream. Although that can seem fun, you know, like I said, the most common way beginners wake themselves up from lucid dreams is they just have sex too often because it's exciting, it's engaging, it's arousing. But then at the same time, because it's so exciting, it wakes you up. And, you know, it will feel good for a few seconds, but then you'll wake up, you'll have lost your lucid state, and you probably won't be able to go back to sleep that easily anyway either. So you really need to consider whether that's something you want to do and, you know, whether it's worth doing that when, you know, there are many more profound lucid dreaming experiences you could be having. Number three, don't just go into a lucid dream with no idea of what you want to do, especially if you've lucid dreamt before, right? Now beginners, by all means, go ahead, go into the lucid dream blind, it doesn't matter what you do because it's all going to be interesting, okay? But if you're advanced and if you, you guys who have had lucid dreams, you'll know what I mean, if you know that you can lucid dream and you know how it works, you've done it before, and you know how to induce a lucid dream at will, right? There's no sense in just inducing a lucid dream and not doing anything with it, because why, why bother, you know? Why not do something profound, productive, interesting, or life-changing? Why not work on your fears, or practice a skill? Why not ask your subconscious questions, or ask your subconscious to surprise you with something and, you know, see what it says? These are more engaging and, and productive things that you could be doing instead of just going to the dream with no goal. It's always a good idea, especially as an advanced lucid dreamer, right? It's always a good idea to go in with a goal of exactly what you want to do. Because let's be honest, time in the lucid dream is short, right? You don't lucid dream for very long. And once it's over, you feel like, you sort of feel a sense of guilt that you didn't spend the time properly and that you wish you could go back and do it again but you have to wait till the next night usually. So just try and think of a goal before you enter a lucid dream and you know, you'll know you be more productive, you'll feel happier and you won't regret the whole thing. So number four, don't just rely on supplements and techniques to give you a lucid dreaming experience. They're sort of like a tool that you can use, but if you rely on them, then you lose out on the creative magic of lucid dreaming. If you just blindly you know, you don't do any reality checks and you don't put any work in, all you do is just take a pill at 4am and hope for the best, then the experience that you do have, if you even have a lucid dream, which you probably won't, won't be as special because you haven't put yourself into it, you haven't given it your energy and intention. And part of the beauty of having a lucid dream is that you give it your solid intention and your willpower drives your mind to create an, an interesting and engaging lucid dream. If you just have a pill, yeah, you might have a lucid dream, but it won't be as special. Number five, and this is slightly a controversial one, try not to do things in a lucid dream that are too similar to a waking life memory. The one, probably the biggest downside of lucid dreaming, the one negative effect it can have, is that if you mix lucid dreams with waking life real memories, when you look back on these things in three, four years time, you'll find it really hard to tell the difference between the two types of memory because your, your brain doesn't know the difference. It really doesn't, especially after a lot of time has passed and the memories, because another thing, memories change with time anyway. This has been proven scientifically. You, this, the memory you have today of something that happened five years ago is not the same memory that happened four years ago. It's not the same thing. 
Your mind has changed it over time, and especially with lucid memories, they can be morphed and blurred. The line between reality and dreaming can be blurred very easily. And if you constantly lucid dream about things you always do, then you're, it's going to be that much harder to tell the difference between dream memories and real memories. A good way of avoiding this is just try not to dream, try not to lucid dream about places you have been loads of times. Try not to lucid dream about being at work or being in your bedroom, right? Because these are <coughs> because what can happen is, say, if you lucid dreamt about being at work and you dreamt about having a certain conversation with someone, you might then wake up or even, you know, in a couple of weeks' time, you might remember that conversation as having happened, even though it happened in a lucid dream, and not real life. And then you might embarrass yourself, you might mention something to your work colleague or whatever, that never actually happened and they never even spoke to you about. This is just one example, but just try not to blur the lines too much between dreams and reality, especially if you're a beginner, because it can get very overwhelming. So that's pretty much it, these are the top five, six things I would not do in a lucid dream. You can obviously do whatever you want, I'm just suggesting that, you know, this is my personal opinion, these are what I wouldn't do. There are many more exciting things you could do, and you should, you owe it to yourself to try and experience as much as possible in a lucid dream. Done.